In nature, all Queen Ants are involved in an epic race of sorts to become the Queen Mothers of their own mighty ant colonies with up to millions and millions of workers. It's the only way to succeed in the ant world. If you could establish your ant colony as fast as possible and grow it as big as possible, the better chances you have of survival in the wilderness. Here I have 14 Queen Ants in test tubes, all caught two weeks ago during their annual mating nuptial flight. Now if all these hopeful Queen Ants could go on to found their own mighty ant colonies, it would make a perfect happy ending story, wouldn't it? However, the reality is, in nature, not all Queen Ants make it to founding successful ant colonies. Some fail to find males to mate with, thus missing out on their one chance to be queens of their own flourishing ant colonies. Some fall victim to lethal molds that consume them slowly from the inside out. And some, as you'll see in a bit, just have the absolute worst luck of the bunch, with a terrifying fate no queen ant would wish for. But if you were a queen ant, perhaps you might be one of the lucky ones who at least make it to the first stage, that is, laying eggs and establishing your first batch of larvae. Getting to this stage is the first challenge not all queen ants manage to achieve. Ladies and gentlemen, today we count how many of our 14 queen ants successfully passed their first challenge in Mother Nature's amazing race of life making it to the brood stage, as we also mourn those queens who failed to pass the challenge, and those who sadly ended up with the worst case scenario of all. Welcome to Mother Nature's amazing race of the queen ants, here on the Ants Canada Ant Channel. Please subscribe to my channel and hit the bell icon. Welcome to the AC family. Enjoy. AC family, all our queen ants have been in the dark and undisturbed for two weeks. And I think you will truly be shocked at what I saw when laying them all out in the light. Most especially what I'm going to show you at the end. But before we get to that, if you're new to ants, these queens were captured during what's called a nuptial flight. The one event and chance every queen ant has in her entire life to mate. Yes, queen ants are born with wings, but they shed them after mating, in most cases anyway. I always wondered how many queen ants, among the millions that fly during a nuptial flight in the wild, actually go on to successfully found a colony. So I felt this mass capturing of 14 queen ants of ours was the perfect opportunity to get a general feel of the queen ant success rate, in this species anyway. These, by the way, are a large species of carpenter ants, a genus and type of ant I'm sure many of you may be familiar with, as they're a pretty widespread genus throughout the entire world. So after capturing the queen ants during their nuptial flight, we ant keepers place them in test tube setups like these, which help simulate the claustral chamber the queens would have made in the wild, which, fingers crossed, would become the birth home of their first generation of worker ants. Now I say fingers crossed because, as mentioned, not all queens manage to mate successfully with males, who, by the way, all die the following morning after mating. And some queens also die for various reasons, which you'll see in a bit. But AC family, let's have a look at all 14 of our queen ants two weeks after capture and find out how many queens have successfully given birth to young, shall we? I think you guys will find the results rather interesting. Here I've laid out our 14 queen ants into two groups. Those that retain their wings on the left and those that shed their wings on the right. Now we ant keepers know that keeping wings on doesn't necessarily mean the queens didn't mate during their nuptial flight because some queens actually may decide to keep their wings on for some reason. But the first thing that surprised me was that among all the winged queens, none of them actually went on to lay eggs. And check this out, we've lost a couple of them to some pretty terrifying fates. This queen fell victim to mold. Ugh, this sight gives me absolute shivers. Poor queen. And the other deceased queen looks like she may have fallen victim to mites. Remember, these test tubes are sterile when the queens are placed inside. So these little parasitic mites had to have come hitching a ride on her body at capture. Rest in peace, queens. So two of the 14 dead within two weeks. 
and four winged queens still eggless. My guess is they hadn't made it, or perhaps they're late bloomers. Let's move on now to the eight remaining wingless queen ants. Now this is where the stats get interesting. The first queen stands protectively over a little pile of brood. Just beautiful. Based on the yellowish color of some of them, I assume some of the brood are larvae. The yellow stuff seen in the larvae's bodies is the nutritious soup the queen ant manufactures from her own body tissues, which she regurgitates like a sort of ant milk to nourish the young. The queen will continue to feed this nutritious self-made soup to the young, as well as subsist off it, until the first set of workers arrive to go look for a proper meal outside the claustral chamber. Amazing to think that the queen is a food-making factory for this first stage of colony founding. But it doesn't last forever, which is why she's really banking on this first generation to make it to adulthood. Her life, as well as that of the future colony, depend on it. Okay, let's move on to the next queen. Queen number two is also looking quite regal and proud, standing protectively over her promising batch of larvae. Good job, queen two. Let's see queen three now. She too, caring for a promising batch of larvae. Moving on to Queen 4, and she too is at the same stage. Now we see family, have a look at this. Here you can see which of the brood are still eggs, as they're more of a cloudy white color, and which have hatched into larvae and have been fed their first meal of Queen Ant soup. Halfway done these queens. Let's move on to Queen number 5. Here you will see the queen tenderly checking and feeling her brood using her mouth parts. Aside from feeding duties, once the eggs hatch, it's important that these queen ants keep their brood together as much as possible and continually clean them and the entire area using their saliva, which has antibiotic properties, to ensure the brood doesn't fall victim to mold. The queens must keep on top of staying clean for her and her young survival. Now check out queen number six, guys. Now this is an impressive brood batch. It seems this queen is ahead of the bunch in terms of brood volume. She's got a lot, and a lot of them are larvae. I count 20 brood pieces there. Here you can really see the queen ant soup through their bodies. Let's move on to queen number seven. This queen also has an impressive brood pile going, and based on her fat and extended gaster, it looks like she's got more eggs on the way. Aw, have a look at her picking up the brood piles to organize them better. What a good mom. And now on to queen number eight. She too has brood. She starts cleaning herself, something she needs to do, again, in order to keep mold at bay. I assume mold spores combed off her body either get eaten or get covered in the queen's antibiotic saliva, rendering them unable to bloom into full out mold outbreaks. And that AC family is the success rate. It seems based on our sample of 14 queen ants, all six of our winged queens failed to lay eggs and found brood, two of which died from outside causes, and all eight of our wingless queen ants successfully proceeded to the next stage of colony founding, laying eggs and nursing the newly hatched larvae. Now this seems like a pretty good success rate, right? But hold on, not so fast. AC family ready for the confusing part? There is still a possibility that in fact, none of these queens successfully mated, even if the eight queens on the right have already begun egg-laying and raising larvae. Let me explain. You see, if you're new to ants, queen ants can still lay eggs even if they hadn't mated. Yes, that's right. And these eggs from unmated queens can actually go on to hatch into male ants. Due to the nature of ant genetics, queen ants need a male ant sperm to create female ants, i.e. worker ants and queens. But without a male sperm, queen ants can still actually lay eggs. But all these unfertilized eggs hatch into larvae, then pupate into male ants which is useless and means doom for such queen ants because in the ant world, male ants don't do work, they don't go off to find food, they don't help with cleaning duties, they don't build tunnels, they don't care for the queen, nor protect the colony, nor do they care for the young and help raise them. Male ants actually don't do anything in the ant world, but mate, come nuptial flight, then die. So it's quite possible these queen ants may be unmated still and are all just raising male ants. 
Which would suck, because then we can't possibly have a colony from them. But AC family, let's see. Based on my experience, some of the queens actually look quite promising. Like the brood of queen number 6, and the fattened gaster of queen number 7. I'll be sure to continue following the progress of these queen ants over time, and keep you all updated. Fingers crossed, at least one of these queens will be fertilized and go on to found their flourishing ant colonies. It truly means a lot to me that you guys out there are watching and supporting the ants on their journey. It's a hard life being an ant, and you all taking the time to follow these true ant stories and subscribe to the channel. Joining our ever-growing AC family is testament to me that ant love truly abounds. Despite most of the world seeing these creatures as pests, that must be sprayed or burned via magnifying glass. If the ants on this channel could talk, I'm sure they'd all say thank you for giving them a chance to show you what true ant life is all about. Let's hope that at least one of these queens is mated and goes on to produce worker ants, so we can truly have fun with giving them a proper ant farm and witness together the miraculous process fashioned by Mother Nature of how an ant colony comes to be. Always remember, it's ant love forever. Oh yeah, but AC family, there's one thing I forgot to show you that I found a bit odd. Looking through the winged queens, one of them stood out to me as rather peculiar. Have a look at this queen ant. Do you see something odd other than her broken wing? Look at her gaster. That stripe is a stretched membrane an extended gaster. Even more odd is that I only see it on one side, not the other. Usually queen ants display extended gasters from physogastry, meaning being so full of eggs they balloon up. But this seems... different. It seems something inside this queen is causing her gaster to balloon up on one side. Weird. But if she was holding eggs in there, I imagine she would have laid by now and the stripe would typically be seen on both sides of her gaster. And AC family, that's when it occurred to me. One of the most terrifying fates I've ever witnessed in a queen ant was in a carpenter ant like her and involves one of the most gruesome and disgusting creatures in the animal kingdom. In my opinion, as I looked at that peculiar stripe, it suddenly dawned on me what it could be and I began to instantly throw up in my mouth. She was incubating something. And clue, it wasn't ant eggs. AC family, I sure hope this queen isn't incubating what I think she's incubating. Ugh. Follow this continuing real life ant story and find out what it is this queen is hosting inside her, as well as the progress of our other queen ants with Brood. By smashing that subscribe button and bell icon now and hit all so you get notified at every upload. Also, don't forget to hit the like button every single time, including now. It would really mean a lot to me, guys. Thank you. AC Inner Colony, I have left a hidden cookie for you here. If you would like to watch extended play footage of all the queen ants with Brood, go check them out. And guys, did you know that it's anting season in the Northern Hemisphere? And you don't even need to leave your home to start an ant colony. You can catch pregnant queen ants from the safety of your own backyard, balcony, or open window starting this month. Be sure to visit AntsCanada.com for all your ant keeping and collecting gear shipped to you in a special package from our ant loving facility in the USA so you can get the most out of your ant keeping experience. We ship worldwide and also offer full email support if you need our help. We also have a helpful forum and ant colony trading marketplace on the site. Visit antscanada.com today. And now it's time for the AC question of the week. Last week we asked, how many species of huntsman spiders are there in the world? Congratulations to Zala Unger, who answered, over a thousand. Congratulations, Zala. You just won a free ultimate ant keeping handbook from our shop. In this week's AC question of the week, we ask, what does a queen ant feed her first set of larvae? Leave your answer in the comment section and you could also win a free ultimate ant keeping handbook from our shop. Hope you can subscribe to the channel as we upload every Saturday at 8 a.m. Eastern Standard Time. Please remember to like, comment, share, and subscribe if you enjoyed this video to help us keep making more. It's Ant Love forever.